Hi everyone, um, welcome to uh, the first episode of the Walk to Emmaus uh, podcast. Uh, my name is Ade, I'm your host, and uh, with me today... Sarah, Brittany, Phoebe, Austin. Right, right. So, um, Walk to Emmaus. Uh, you know, so in this podcast series, uh, what we hope to do is to have uh, casual conversations as young people um, about life and also about our faith. Uh, walk with Jesus. So, but what's the inspiration behind the na- name? Right, it doesn't sound like a typical <laughs> podcast name. Podcast name, I right? know. <laughs> so, to help us with that. <laughs> well, this podcast name is actually inspired by a passage of the Bible. Um, so, if you don't mind, we'll go straight to reading it. Um, Luke twenty-four, from verse thirteen to thirty-four. That same day, we're reading from the New Living Translation. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short, sadness written across their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, You must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there the last few days. What things? Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus. The man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles, and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Then some women from our group of, of his followers were at his tomb early this morning, and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing, and they had seen angels who told them Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to see, and sure enough, his body was gone, just as the women had said. Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people, You find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. By this time, they were nearing Emmaus and the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he were going on, but they begged him, Stay the night with us, since it is getting late. So he went home with them. As they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And at that moment he disappeared. Mm -hmm. They said to each other, Didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? Mm -hmm. And within the hour they were on their way back to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven disciples and the others who had gathered with them, who said, the Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Yes. So we see what had uh, started as like a casual conversation between two people, you know, about uh, something depressing ended up being a walk with Jesus. Ended up being a walk with Jesus. And it started out with them being sad, like right. Bible literally says, sadness was breathing all over their faces. Right. And then at the end of it, you could see that they were, like their hearts were burning right. while Jesus explained the scriptures to them, because right. Jesus came and joined them on that walk. Exactly. Them, so. so what we, um, you know, what we uh, hope, right, is that with each episode, you know, it's going to be very conversational, you know, but that just as you know, Jesus uh, journeyed with those two disciples on that walk to Emmaus, right, and Jesus is going to you know, journey along with us to, you know, one conversation at a time, one episode at a time, right? That's the prayer. I know, right? Awesome. <laughs> okay, so to kind of help us, you know, uh, guide you know, our conversations, we're going to have themes or topics, right? So, uh, being the first episode, you know, thinking of something that would really help us to <laughs> start this. I know who to fire on. So, uh, so today, we're going to be discussing or exploring, are Christians boring? Now, when you hear that, what comes to mind? (laughs) 
Maybe like defensiveness. <laughs> I'm not boring. Like, what do you mean? He's kind of boring. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like what comes to my mind is that people think that we just sit at home all day and don't do nothing and just hide ourselves from the world. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Just pray and fast. Yeah. And study the Bible. Right. Right. <laughs> and I think the um, topic depicts um, actually guessing like are Christians boring? Yeah. yeah like, like, so they don't, they don't have full details about right. Christianity. Okay. Yeah. So to help you unpack all of that, I've got my crew, the best crew ever on the top So question number one. Now, what is fun? Like, how, like when you hear fun, right? What comes to mind? Something you're gonna do that's exciting. Okay. That comes to mind. I feel like at some point we should have Googled. We should have done, oh, Google says fun is this. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad. Fun is different for everyone. Yeah. Right. Very true. You know, that's mm. kind of why we're having this. It's right. different for everybody. Can you speak to that a little bit? Like, like to the world, you know, speaking of them, like they would think fun is like going to the club, mm. drinking, you okay. know. Doing drugs, as most people are doing now, um, mm. just hanging out, doing things that, you know, don't really give any glory to themselves or progress them anyway, spiritually. Mm. But um, Christians, you know, for fun, for us, you know, is, you know, going out doing the same things, but making sure we give glory to God, taking the sin out of those things, right. you know. That's what's fun to me. This is fun to me. Right. <laughs> Sitting here with a good group of people who love right. the Lord and that's right. trying to touch yeah. the hearts of people. That's fun. Right. You know. So so. It seems to me from what you said that it's like fun, or you know, godly fun is like finding a healthy balance between entertainment, relaxation, mm -hmm. without necessarily compromising your faith in Jesus. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is, that always a, is that always a very, like, an easy thing to do? Like, take for example, I think fun, and in, in also not to take away from what you said, but fun, like you said, is glorifying God in what you do. So mm -hmm. it's just the remembering, remembering to glorify God, remembering that, mm -hmm. okay, um, let's say not everyone's fun is clubbing. Right. I right. can be crocheting. Right. Yeah. Just, yeah. you know, you can be crocheting, zoned out. Praising God in your mind, yeah. like, oh, thank God for yes. this. Like, right. this. It's time to relax. It's time to do what you nothing. Do enjoy from. Mm -hmm. What you do, I do. And, like, mm -hmm. putting God in that as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Like, appreciating. Oh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to do this. Right. Like, to have time to do this, time to right. relax. Right. Time. So, like, hey. even, sorry. No, no, go so, ahead. even, like, people who are not Christians mm -hmm. right. have different definitions of fun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can see someone that's not a Christian enjoy crochet. Mm -hmm. yes. And some other person is like, that's boring, and they enjoy clubbing. Right. And some other person is not a Christian, but doesn't enjoy clubbing, enjoys right. painting, something that someone else would see as boring, or gaming. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know. Or watching right. soccer or for American. American. That's not the next day. Hey, hey, I'm not guilty. Right. I'm just saying. Different folks. Right, different right, folks. right. right. You know. So I, I like when you say, when uh, Fumibi said that it's something that you derive joy from. Right. Yeah, as a person. Right. So then, what makes it different as a Christian? Like, what makes, because what makes fun different as a Christian? If you know what I mean. Because if, if it's already different for different folks, uh, this is without being Christians. Right. Then why is it different, different for a Christian? Got you know it. what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. And defying God in what you do. That's the point. And you know, including him. Including him. I'm making it a priority. Right. And you know, as we're talking, one scripture comes to mind. I think it's in Colossians, the uh, chapter now, that says, in whatever you do, in word or in deed, do it, do it as unto the Lord. So whether, you know, uh, you know, I'm in church, right? I mean, the last time I checked, the word deed, you know, speaks to, speaks to anything, everything. Whatever you do means whatever. Whether you're having fun or you're doing serious stuff. Have that consciousness, that mindset, right? That Jesus uh, wants to be a part of that. Yeah. So it's not like um, a compartmentalization where, oh, you know, I leave God out, or I leave Jesus out when I want to have fun, right? But when I want to do church stuff, then I include Jesus. So even in 
entertainments, right? Yeah. Even in relaxation. Mm -hmm. Have that mind that whatever I do, you know, in word or in deed, Jesus wants to be a part of that. So is Jesus going to be a part of that when I'm going clubbing? Is Jesus going to be a part of that when I'm, you know, doing drugs? That, can, I, can I say something? Because sure. we, we had, like, a slight discussion yesterday. You right. didn't know about this. So we had a discussion yesterday. <laughs> um, and you, you had said something. You had said... Um, how you start, you have to start from somewhere. It, right. mm -hmm. And I say you are committed to sin, but you know, you, you want to stop. You know, you, this is not where you want to be or where you should be. And you pray about it. And you get, like, you pray about it, you get that peace of mind, but it still happens again up until a point where you start realizing, okay, I, I, I don't want to do this stuff anymore. It's not yeah. part of my life. Yeah. Yeah. So you said is Clubbing, does clubbing edify God? Does it? Can you? Can God be part of clubbing? Right. At some point, I mean, at the beginning, it is. You you have to bring him into it to be able to stop. If you want to stop, like how you you say, oh my God, all right, I'm doing this. Right. God, I, thank you. It's happening. I apologize. I love you. And constantly until you find that you've changed. From wanting that, because you mm -hmm. keep bringing God into it, okay. like, okay. And you cannot imagine bringing God into that activity. Yes. Right. Okay. At some right. point, you're just like, I know. That's the Holy Spirit. I have a question in, the, in relation to yours. Okay. So, um, I think clubbing has different meaning. To different people? To different, yeah, people. To different people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clubbing. I've met Christians who um, say, oh, I go to a club, but I don't do anything bad when I go to the club. Then why are you there is my question. So what, what, what goes on in the club? What goes on in the club, right? Yeah. I think there's something about an atmosphere. Yep. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan. I, like, I remember there was one time, this was earlier on in my Christian walk, I was like, there's nothing wrong with doing um, pole dancing. I would like to learn how to do that. Yeah. And I couldn't find anywhere in the Bible that said you can't do pole. I'm sorry, <laughs> this sounds, I'm just being honest. Here. No, it is. There's I'm the conversation. Yeah. You can't yeah, do pole right. dancing. And they had pole dancing right, classes. Right, right. And I was like, I learned that. And then I'll get a pole in my house. And right. when I get married, I'll pole dance. With your husband. There you go. And I thought that that was a good thing. One man, one man audience, right? It, right. And there's, there's nothing in the Bible that says I can't do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then when I, you know, went on with my desire, I found the class. Mm -hmm. And I got there. And the Holy Spirit right. was like, do you feel me in this atmosphere? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, the music... Mm -hmm. The dressing, everything about everyone that was there was just not, not, him. not God. Mm -hmm. And I, just, I left. I couldn't stay there. Right. So, would you say, if, let's say, uh, the different, I would say the different vibes for pole dancing, maybe. So, what if you went to a class that wasn't that vibe, that sexualized vibe that you did not want, but it was just, oh, you're learning how to pole? Cause Pole dancing isn't all strippers and mm -hmm. because it's a sport. Mm -hmm. It takes it's a sport. That's exactly what I told myself. It takes abs. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm gonna work out. I'm gonna work out. That's what I said. That's what I told myself. I told myself everything you just said. I said that. Right. Yeah, but I got leaving, there. Leaving the boy <laughs> I'm like, uh, okay. I thought it was some brothers in this one. <laughs> but that's the thing, though, right? Yeah. All things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. Yeah. Can you unpack right? that? Can you unpack that? Yeah. Yes. You know, so everything is good. It technically, it's right. And technically, when you start using that word, technically, it's not wrong. <laughs> yeah. When you start using that word for something that's not technical at all, yeah, you need to check it. You know, as you're talking, I, um, um, I remember scripture in Galatians, I uh, think chapter is it 5, 14, let's say 14. Mm -hmm. You know, where the Bible says that walk in the spirit. Mm -hmm. So that you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Mm -hmm. So I think it seems to me right now that the question, one of the ways that we can check whether, you know, a, um, a sporting activity, right, um, is it going to be God honoring or Jesus honoring would be to ask the question from the Holy Spirit even before participating. Yeah. Right. Especially for those gray areas yeah. that are not clearly yeah. spelled out in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Like Holy Spirit, right? Because again, um, uh, those who are led by, by the, the Spirit, Spirit of God. 
artists and stuff. So the question that I think that can help us, you know, especially with these great areas, is can I truly say, truly say, that the Holy Spirit is the one leading me? Because you know, you make, you make a very good point of okay, yeah, it's just a sport, but let's not forget that the fact that no culture or cultural practice or element is neutral. Like there are certain aspects of our culture that if you want to look at it from a sociological standpoint, it feels like, oh, this is just how it is here in America. But, but behind that, right, if you truly want to you know, be discerning, you should ask yourself. I think for us, our, uh, our lens shouldn't just be a social culture. It's sports. I think it should be more of a, you know, um, a, a, a biblical standpoint of saying, Holy Spirit, how do you define this? It, it can be sport to everybody, okay. but is it really sport to me as your son or daughter? Exactly. So, so are, you trying to, are you trying to say that the Holy Spirit is dynamic in his um, instructions? Well, I, I would say yes, okay. but I don't think the dynamism of the Holy Spirit will contradict what's in the Bible. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Because he inspired it. Remember 2 Timothy 3, 16, all scripture is inspired by God. That's so which... Go ahead. We need to read the Bible. Also. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. So that way we're not, uh, we're not participating in something that is camouflaged. Or as, oh, this is just sports yeah. in the context yeah. of the society we live in. Yeah. You know, because for us, our identity, our core identity should be our faith. Okay. Now, things like this is what makes people say that we're boring. Yes. Because every time... Are we sounding boring already? Yeah, you're boring. Every other person is like, oh, it's just a sport. But, and you're coming up with right. it. Yes. Oh, it's pretty sad that you do it. Yeah. Oh, like this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or maybe... Oh, continue. Okay, so yeah. like... <laughs> Some things gratify yourself. Oh my God. You're right. trying to look for fun right. or you're trying to yeah. gratify yourself. That's self, right. yeah. And once you put self as God, you're already falling out of you're the way. Right. Right. Yeah. So people who are not, you, you, the Bible says that there are certain things that, um, said these things that they confound the wise. Like you can't understand them with your mind. The right. Holy Spirit has to explain right. these things to you. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can't even explain it to people of the world that I I know that you think this thing is fun, but it's dangerous. Every, it, it seems right. There's a way that cement writes to it. The end of it is destruction. So it looks right. It looks fun. Right. But it actually isn't. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you, you're always taking sugary stuff, you're always taking sugary stuff. Oh my God. It looks like fun. It tastes like fun. <laughs> But there's diabetes at the end of that. So when you have diabetes, ask the person who has diabetes. This is not funny. Sugar is not funny anymore. So that thing that was fun, there's a point you get to in your walk with God where you don't desire it because you know. If you know that the end of this is diabetes, it doesn't look appetizing anymore. Yeah, but because you don't know. Yeah, that's why. Exactly, and I was going to say, it can even be a gateway to yeah. something else. Yeah. If you let yourself do that when you're trying to let the Holy Spirit work in you, right. it'll be a gateway to something else. You're like, oh, if I'm going to dance on this pole, then, right. you know, I can go to the club, so I can right. do this, and I can do this because it's fun, right. you know, and mm. you're not really finding mm. anything in that. Yeah. Right. So, I, I, you actually seen something this morning that, um, that the Holy Spirit will tell us to do something, not because he's... Um, I don't know, because it's actually right to do for the benefit of others. Right. You say that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's reached to the yeah. scripture, you know, the one you had quoted about how all things are lawful. Yeah. You know, and yeah. Yeah, but not all things are expedient. And, I, you know, as you were talking, uh, Sister Sarah, you know, it just seems to me that um, without having like a strong why behind the what that we do, it will be difficult for us to stand for something. Mm -hmm. Right, because the reason, uh, back to the example you gave, uh, the reason I know that I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna love a sugar is because I have a big why. Mm -hmm. What is a big why? Diabetes. I don't want to hang out with diabetes, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it seems to me also, you know, that bringing out here that if my uh, big why is as a believer is to please Jesus, mm -hmm. is to make the Holy Spirit. Um, want to feel you know at home when living in my heart, then that big why should compel me 
So, so that, that way it's now because we're not talking about laws here, we, right? Because we've not talked about yeah. God is a shout, shout is the era, exactly. <laughs> because we don't roll like that. That's the But if my big why is to please Jesus, right? My master, the Holy Spirit who lives on the side of me, then that big why should compel me, right, to not do certain things. And I honestly really believe that do we like, should we always have to like explain ourselves like to people who don't share faith why we're not right do we always have to is that a too much pressure to put on ourselves on ourselves i think you might have to keep like explaining until they get it because i know like some of my friends i'm like you know i don't want to do that you know okay. i want to serve god more but it's like it doesn't click to them because right. they're so far gone you know or they don't remember they don't know the new you they still mm-hmm. think of you as the way you used to be right so sometimes you got to keep reiterating until they get it right like, until they stop you know inviting you to these places or asking yeah. you to do certain things and, and i think we should leave um a lifestyle that they can inculcate like once they watch you mm-hmm. like they go, oh this guy's good i have friends like that that <clears throat> because of my personality they said oh because of, even for you, I would have done this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So living by example. Yeah, living by a good yeah. example. Not only to your juniors, but with your friends also. Okay, so I'm, a, I'm gonna play devil's advocate here. Okay. <laughs> I'm all for it. <laughs> so we'll are, there, are there some Christians, though, that make Christianity look boring? I mean, like, you know, that one person. <laughs> Yeah. Let's talk about that. that. Because I know, I know that before, just many years ago, uh, I can't remember if it was before I gave my life to Jesus or if it was the first few years. But to be honest with you, I also was at that point where I'm like, man, if this is what Christianity is all about, I don't want none of that. So let's talk about it. I've heard a joke one time where someone said that, he looked at heaven and they were like singing and raising their hands and he looked at hell and all the like people playing golf. Oh my god! You know, all, the, like, no. all the singers, all the dancers, all of them were right there and he was like, I know, I'm not one. I'm not going to go there. Nah, yeah. That's torture. That's torture. <laughs> yep. But that's the perspective people have. They're like, yeah. oh, this looks boring, this looks fun, I should go here. So who's your one person? That, you know, that made you feel like, ah, this is what Christianity is all about. I don't want to be a Christian. Because mm. let's be honest, nobody likes boredom. I mean, at least I don't. Like, I haven't seen a Christian that gives me that vibe. I think, like, I just had a thought. So you want me to hang around with all the coolers? <laughs> <laughs> no, look, it's, it's, I think, fun in terms of Christian living. No, I just, it just came to my head right now what well, is like the part of figuring out what is right what can you do what can i do like yeah. imagine the bible as therapy like hey i am having issues with something here i know there's something in here that's like talking about it oh guidance yeah. yeah so i think people should just think of it as therapy this you have someone here who who wants to talk to you, who wants to listen to you, constantly right. guide you, and he also has his word here saying, okay, this was what happened before you were born with your forefathers and everyone, and my experience with your humans and my creation, yeah. and how I want them, want to guide them, want to lead them, right. how I feel like this is what will give you peace. Yeah. Mm. Rather than stress. Right. So the fun part is the figuring it out. You just like imagine having an issue for months and thinking about it, what what is going on here, and then finding the answer. And you're just like, ah, all right. <laughs> well, um, if I'm going to go back to your question about yeah. like finding Christians that made you feel like oh, Christianity was boring, um, I think before I became, as I grew in my walk with God, like right. when I was still starting. There are some Christians that made me feel not Christian enough. Mm. And I don't think that they intended to do uh, that. Yes. Yeah. Right? It's just, I had a long list back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, don't I didn't know sound Christianese. You know, I didn't look Christian enough. I didn't sound Christian enough. I didn't. And, and many times, it's not like they're telling you. 
that you're not Christian enough. You're telling yourself that oh, I don't measure up to this standard. Uh, I don't measure up to right. this. So I should just never call this to them. Yeah, because they're so. So old. your your sense making of what you saw them do, right? Yes. Because now that I'm a little older, I realize they didn't do anything to me. If you ask, if you tell yourself the truth, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't tell you if that you're not Christian if. enough. Yeah. Most times. I, I, I don't know yeah. if anyone has experienced someone telling you you're not Christian enough. Yeah. It's just you telling yourself that, no, I'm not as Christian as they are. I'm just going to worship God from here. Like, mm -hmm. Let but them, I, you but know. I, but I did have those. Yeah. But I, I remember, but I did have it. I remember uh, because when, when hey, I'm not going to you know, give too much details, but I remember a time when you know, I did have a couple of people who be like, the folks who wear jeans are not like, when you are, oh, yeah. you're not holy enough, like, yeah. you know, so you're not doing pants. Women wearing pants. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, oh, I so. I met someone who said you can't, like, people in the pool, both sexes in the pool, right. genders in the pool, uh -oh. you guys are going to hell. And, and so, so. That, 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 <laughs> I'm have a thing on that, though, since you saw I was like, oh, was that? I might have a thing with brothers and sisters hanging out together in the pool, though. <laughs> Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe that'll be a topic That's for another topic. day. Okay, I can another okay. day. Okay, I forgot. Because, uh, it's, like, uh, so uh, if it's not a man, like your husband? No, but like, no, oh, I, I go to the pool and Fumibi is swimming in the pool. He's swimming in his lane, I'm in my lane. It's your mindset. Okay. It's so your this mind. Is, this is where, okay, this is where, <laughs> hold on, so this is where, <laughs> this is where, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, now I'm going to do this all of a sudden, right? So now I'm changing lanes from the anchor to Judas. Look at that, guys. In 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, guys. This is how we're going to roll now. That's a topic so, so, for you guys. So this, this is one of, I think, I come, I feel like this is an episode where Pastor, whatever Pastor is right now, he might not like this, but this is an episode, you know, where I think we need to yeah. bring Pastor on as a guest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Should I come? Because I, I, don't, I don't know about saying sisters and Bikinis, swimming in the pool. Okay, we'll have to talk about bikinis. Okay. 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 I'm just saying. When you say that, you're addressing decency. Decency. Modesty. Everything should be done in modern. Can I call a friend? Can I call Pastor right now? Yeah. Can I grab my phone? Another phone. Like an irony. Well, no, decency in just your outfits. Yeah. yeah. Like, you have, that's why it's so important that you have the Holy Spirit. Okay, yeah. Exactly. Th there's been times where I wear something that I think there's nothing wrong with it. And the Holy Spirit is like, come on, change. You, yeah. you can't wear that. It's for the benefit of others, maybe. You know, yeah. Right. So that's a decency topic now. Ooh. It's not about swimming as a sport, okay. per se. It's more about decency. Okay. Mm. What, I mean, what do people wear to pool? Back to not Back to <laughs> <laughs> hey, I thought Back this was, wait, 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 I thought this was supposed to be like organic, wrong. right? Organic. Wow. Organic. Organic. <laughs> Okay, back, back on track. I do I have that. something to say in regards to you mentioning, like, not feeling Christian enough at some point. I, I still go through that, I would admit. Um, mm. And it's, it's very self-isolating. Mm. Because I remember college, ugh, mm. Mm. tiny Tilson. I'm still tiny. Tiny Tilson, just like. Tiny your <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh, I... Uh, right. found a Christian group, amazing, amazing group. I love them. And but then you see people, you've seen how far in the personal walks with God they've gotten and you're just like Yeah. You feel so behind and that can also that can be self isolating because you're just like, Okay, I am just gonna be in my corner like you said okay. is I, I I want to mess with anyone. I, I so what do we do as Christians, right, to make other people not feel that way? Mm. Oh what, my God, that's a good question. I think, again, I don't have the answer, but I think a good place to start maybe, if we truly understand, and you know, I was listening to one of my um, favorite um, uh, uh, you know, pastors is, uh, hope, hope I get them in someday, is uh, Dr. Tony Evans. And I think there was a time when he would say something about how, um, you know, like the, the goal of the gospel, you know, is uh, our relationship with God and then get us to heaven. 
but that in the scope of the gospel, the scope of the gospel, you know, um, encompasses or includes our relationships with one another. So if I truly understand that, you know, God cares not only about the goal of the gospel, which is, you know, all this work in my heart, making my life Jesus and getting to heaven, but that God also cares about, you know, how I relate with the scope of this gospel, which is that God cares about my relationship with every person, then hopefully that should help me understand that God cares about how I treat my brother, my sister. So that way, if by how I live my life, I make other brothers and other sisters feel small, then I know I'm not doing something right. Because the same way God cares about my walk with Him, right? He also cares about, you know, them, my brothers and sisters, not getting discouraged from continuing on on the journey. So I think, I think, and I know for me that having this, this mindset has helped me a lot. So I, think, I kind of feel like this was what Paul had in mind when we was talking about that conversation about oh, food that has been all, um, offered to idols and, you know, like if you're strong enough in your faith, you can eat it. But there are some folks who are not, you know, strong in their faith. So I think understanding that, you know, we are one body, we're all members of that body. And that uh, if a finger, if my pinky hurts, I'm going to feel it. So if there's a brother or a sister, right, who's feeling ostracized, left behind, because of how we carry ourselves, right, then I think that um, we, should be, um, we should be sensitive enough to know that that is, a, um, that is something that I should be concerned about. Yeah, that should be addressed. So it should be addressed. Um, in relation to what you say, um what you said about the college, I think <clears throat> one we should um, study the nature of that. Um, holiness. Yeah, because some some people take holiness to the extreme, mm -hmm. and two, and I think we should. Sounds like a topic. <laughs> yeah. 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 Some people take holiness to the extreme. Mm -hmm. that, oh, you did this. You did this. Um, you sin against God. You have to do some some you know. Some rituals and the Pharisees um, yeah, and the Sadducees. Yeah. 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 So and so and, and I think maybe go, by God's grace, if I was in that situation, I will. And if that um, meeting is actually genuine, I will, you know, pray to God, Lord, please carry me on with them so that I can be, I can become motivated. Mm. Okay. Okay. So to you know to work with you, mm. like an inspiration, like a drive mm. to work yeah. with you. Because if you feel if you feel depressed and you know, want to leave there and you yeah. not benefit what God has for you in the meeting, right. and yeah. I, okay. I think like it's also realizing that they where they are at right now did not just happen overnight. Well, they didn't start from that. Yeah. That's what I was exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like sharing your testimony, yeah. your, your, like your growth process. Yeah. Yeah. I just told you that I used to feel that way, yeah. and then she just told me that she's feeling <laughs> yeah. that way. I think, um, I think you share yes. a, um, our experiences. Christian experiences maybe some other time. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. So but, but, like, but do we we don't do we do that enough? Exactly. Though? I think yeah. that's what conversations like this are about. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I just told like, you that. Like, hey, right. I felt like dancing, like doing all dancing. You might be out there thinking that, you know, yeah. and then you realize, oh, yeah. there's someone over there who also thought that, and this right. is the process that she went yeah. through. Okay, so I'm not abnormal. Right. You know, this is a process. I can grow from yeah. where I am too. Right. Exactly. And and you know, thank you. That's a great point. One of the things that has helped me and still helps me is. Whenever I uh, want to feel, or when I f do feel overwhelmed by, by how far I need to go, mm. the Holy Spirit, you know, usually helps me to remember how far I've come. Yeah. Mm. So I think whenever you feel, because in that case, you look at all these brothers and sisters, man, look at how far these guys have gone. I'm like, Jesus, right? Are we going to the same heaven? <laughs> 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 like, you know, like, like a heaven with a... Yes. You know, I go like in heaven with an uppercase H, we look for like a pastor, Felix, and then, yeah, I know, and like a heaven with a lowercase H, for folks like me. But then, in that moment, the Holy Spirit, you know, helps me to understand like that, but well, think about how far I've brought you. Yeah. So, in that moment, you know, that helps me not to feel overwhelmed, because honestly, you can feel so overwhelmed to the point where you feel like giving up, right? Yes. You know, what's even the point? I'm never going to be like this pastor. I'm never going to be like this brother. But then when we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit say, hey, Baruch, can I have brought you? 
if I've brought you this far, then I can take you farther. So that usually helps me to say, okay, you know what, a day, you know, as, lo as long as, I, I mean, doesn't Paul say that in Philippians? Yeah. That it's not like I've, I've apprehended, but there's one thing that I do, I forget the past. And I press on. Like, I can't imagine Paul saying, like, Paul, oh, really? Paul. Exactly. Paul, Paul should just be a room with you. I know. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you know, so if, if, so if Paul understood that, I keep pressing on. So I think that, you know, would encourage you. Look at how far you've come with God. How far the Spirit has brought you. And that can, you know, give you the strength to keep going. Mm. Yeah, I feel like what you just said is one of the reasons why, because the whole giving up and, because you feel down right, and bad about right. it. I have so many times oh, given up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every one of us. Who has it, right? And then you step back up again. Uh -huh. And just remember the zeal. Keep that zeal to start. And also know you can always, always come back. You don't, you, you shouldn't be like, oh, I gave up. So, you know, no one's going to accept me back now. I have to start from scratch. I can't do this. No, you can. Just come in. Come back. And, you know, stay there. Mm. Like, when you made that step to go in, just make sure to stay where you are. And you will, you will feel elevated at some point. You, it, it's not going to happen today. It's not going to happen yeah. in months. You just need to be consistent and constant in being starting being at the starting point right. because if you leave because you feel like I'm not growing here I'm not mm -hmm. then it will never happen because right. you constantly right. think about that oh last time I tried this this happened in addition to as also um if you are facing some difficulties in what you're supposed to do maybe in reading the Bible you can just have a vision of like what is it uh, have a vision of where God is taking us mm -hmm. So that it can motivate us to, right. you know, to press on. I was gonna say, um, you know, a lot of us, a lot of people might come into a church and fall off. Like she said, you're not growing or anything, and that's right because you haven't found the right church and the right people to be around to grow in. And um, and like the pastor said, love, like letting love control us, letting God love control us, and then that gives more love to other people and then you give them grace to change right. and you know if your people feel the love in the building and know god is here then they'll want to keep coming they want to keep yeah. doing it want to keep going yeah. Yeah. are we still on track <laughs> I kind of feel like that was, that was what the Holy Spirit wanted That's us to talk what, yep, about. Yeah, yeah, you know, yep, um, yeah. So we started out with all Christians born. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer to you. Yeah, so one question. What do you yes. think? What do you, what you guys think? think? Tell us so, in the so comment section. There you go, right. Yes. So quick, quick question for you all. You feel comfortable. So what do you do now? What do we do now to have fun? Because it seems to me like if I'm listening, or right, I'm watching, you know, or watching if it's for those who are going to be you know, listening on our podcast, we're just uh, we're gonna watch it on YouTube, whatever. They probably wanna know, right? Like, okay, so okay, what do y'all do for <laughs> I mean, for fun? I'll admit that I'm still in the process of growing, so okay. I still do worldly things. Okay, we're not, we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> no, we're not talking about that. But for fun, for my the, the um, non worldly things. Non <laughs> 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 Okay. I read. Oh. Okay. Um, now I, I'm trying to read my Bible more as well as just read other books. Yeah. Like it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't. Yeah. God is not saying read only a Bible, guys, yeah. yeah. bro. Yeah. <laughs> In other ways as well. Uh, I read. I hike. I just, uh -oh. you know, yeah. yeah. It gives you time to think. Okay. Just I like that. Yeah. yeah. And introspect. Okay. I think oh, yeah. introspecting is so, fun. So that's a fun, that's a fun yeah. activity. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. So, so for me. So what do? Yeah, yeah like what do you do for fun? Yeah, God, the things you do for fun. Mm. So yeah, if you don't have any borderlines, <laughs> we're not talking about borderlines. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have another episode yeah, no, for borderlines. Yeah, I have to be honest. I will yeah, still grow this. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I should be honest. Yeah. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. All yeah. things are lawful. Lawful. All things are beneficial. Right. Yeah. So um, what I do for fun, I'm just a, I'm kind of a gentle boy. Yeah, a gentle boy. This is a PK. He's a PK, y'all. He's a PK. I'm a gentle boy. Yeah. Thank God, I'm not a PK. So so, so um, what I do for fun, I love composing songs. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 I love composing songs yeah. then. Yeah. You know, reading, reading my Bible, Bible to know, know more about, about him because, because lack of knowledge yeah. is yeah. very important. So reading the Bible and composing songs. Yeah. yeah. And so so, reading, so guys, we have a junior, Nathaniel Bass. So Nathaniel Bass is one of right one of the biggest gospel ministers, you know, from from Nigeria. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Please pray for me. Yeah, we need to add more fun. Right. Yeah. 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 And I have yeah. yeah. got recommendations for you, yeah. so you can, can hook up with uh, Sister Santos afterwards. Okay. Well, what I do for fun, like, of course what they do, I do read my Bible, you know, I've gotten more to reading books, I'm trying to grow more in God, but I also do other things, I bowl, I, um, I swim, with, there you go. there might be men in the pool too. <laughs> Oh my God! What level flip is this? The full chains. I also do. I also do. I also do. I do some other fun stuff, but I play video games also. What were you thinking before? I play soccer. Yeah. Get out of here. Not not think I'm boring. I kind of feel. I kind of feel like Fubu just he just checked into the studio. I need to check out. I was just wondering how, how Tosi and Ricky would feel, you know, would feel when he said, you know, like, you guys are closer to me. I'm like, I'm not even a Bible, but that's like my go-to thing for fun. I love watching soccer, so... Okay, so we're going to take watching soccer and play soccer. I'm just kidding. You, you can read your Bible for fun. Okay. But, um, yeah, um... Bowling, swimming, I like to paint. I like to hike. You like to paint? Yeah. I love to learn how to hike. Yeah. So. Acrylic? Um, acrylic or the um, oil? No, I haven't done oil yet. Okay, she did a private session. Okay. Call your private session. Remember, remember in the beginning, he would make them with the middle of the female. So right now, you guys are living it out. Don't you paint? I mean, I would love, love to learn, learn that. I mean, okay. okay. But I, I, I can paint, mm -hmm. but, I, but I don't paint. Yeah, okay. okay. for professional. You, you don't paint professionally. You paint for fun. fun. I, I paint for fun. I, I would not sell my paint, paint products, like, like products I right. made from my painting. I mean, I mean maybe they'll sell for like $5. Five dollars. Right? <laughs> hey, maybe they'll sell for something, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, so yeah. paint. Yeah, I mean, maybe one, you know, we can suggest to a pastor. You know, find a weekend, weekend right, right where, where we, you know, because I like to learn how to hike, for example. Wow. So it sounds like a very cool yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 What do you do? Yeah. do for me, um, well, well, I paint. paint. Uh, yes, okay. one of my favorite hobbies. I paint. Um, I swim. I swim. I like to swim. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, I take walks. Yeah, I take walks. Yeah, I take walks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but really, really I think those are the things, things that I do. I like, I like to hang out with people. people. I, like I like fine dining. Uh, I'm bougie too. Bougie too. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, so. Okay. Those are things that I do. Yeah. Awesome. And yeah. then I do enjoy reading my Bible. Okay, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. I, I, I do too, for the record. This is all of you and I do my life. For the record. I've only thought of, like, you know, 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 I just have to. Yeah. Uh, I wonder what pastors all these are, you know? I feel like I feel like soccer is going to be up there. Yeah. Singing, writing, music. No, Bible. That's the first one. I can tell you. Conversing with God. Oh, yeah. Praying, fasting. Glory, Yeah, this is heavy duty. Heavy duty stuff. Uh, hey, hey Pastor, whatever you are, once you're listening to this, yeah. you're coming on our show, yes. you're going to give, give us your list. <laughs> you better have fasting and praying on that list. I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. joking around, you know. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's a cool, yeah, yeah, it's it's cool. yeah I like it. It's I'm a pastor Tao. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah it's very smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's one of those fools that make you feel like, man, I still have a long way to go. So, yeah, so, I mean, so for me, uh, similar to you actually, you know, I soccer, and I'm a Chelsea fan, you know, uh, so I love watching, yeah, the English Premier League, I love it, and um, 
So, so of course, maybe people, people having conversations said, you know, uh, how does it watching movies? Why don't we talk about this? So we are giving we are giving you um, the upcoming <laughs> <laughs> topics. Yes. So, so, um, so, so I know we've talked a lot, uh, as, as we run off, I'd like, like to say, so, so like what's, what's your closing out position to interview? So I talked about a lot of things, so what's your closing out statement or word, right? I was saying, whatever you do, you know, just think of the, the things the Spirit gives you. He gives you peace, joy, you know, contentment, and we're not boring, just find that in the things that you do, the fun that you do. Just make sure that it's still giving. You know, you go over to God and you still find peace and you're not compromising yourself to do it. Yeah. Thank you. Hosin? Of course. What are you thinking? Hosin? You're nice. Hey, you're nice. You're nice. You're nice. You're nice. You're nice. Yeah, like she said, so finding peace. Just realizing that the things that are not of, of God, God or from God, God for, for you would, would not, not give you that peace that you know that, that the Holy Spirit, Spirit can when, when you're being, being guided, guided by the Holy Spirit. Spirit. You know, okay. That, okay. That, that calm, that, that I'm, I'm not even second guessing this, because mm. I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so we need to get, get to that point. point. Yeah. Yeah. And remember, remember because also remembering, remembering is also very important. important. Remember, remember what those stuff are. Remember, remember that feeling. Remember, remember what, what you should strive for. Amen. Thank you. So, uh, Brittany. She should just say it. Oh, Jesus. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I learned two things. Um, number one, I learned that we should learn to balance our uh, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Because it's going, going to the extreme, you know, um, I think they have the saying that, that um, I forgot the name, like, it's, it's about, about going, going to the, um, going extreme with our lifestyle, lifestyle activities. activities. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, too, too much, much of everything is not good. Not good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so too, too much, much of God. God. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, not good. good. Oh. Too much of God is not good? No, like, I mean... Topic, topic. Yeah, yeah. Can you, can you, can you write it down? Too much of God. You can never get too much of God. You can never get too much of God. I'm glad Pastor is not here. Probably would have whooped you all. <laughs> so, and yeah, yeah. 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 And, and the, so the second one is um, we should learn to pay attention to the Holy Spirit, Spirit voice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, like the story of Balaam yeah. and um, Balak. Yeah. 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 So we we'll need that one. So, so we should learn to pay attention to the voice of God. We should consider Him a priority in life. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, would, I, would I would say that, that okay, okay, let me start, start with an example. example. So, so when, when, when we were children, children there were certain things that we did that, that were fun to us. us. Mm -hmm. but, but as, as we, we grow older, older we, we think that's silly. Mm -hmm. Like, children, children will jump in a puddle and, mm -hmm. and then have a great time. I'm not saying that the puddle is bad, but like how many adults do you Sometimes when you're playing around, okay, yeah, but like some things that children will do for fun, like they to, to them, them is fun. Mm -hmm. when, when, as, as you grow older, older the, um, I, I, you, you hear a teenager, teenager say, I'm, I'm not a baby, baby I'm not doing that anymore. You, you know, because they're teenagers, teenagers now. And then you become an adult and you think, think those things are silly, you don't want to do them anymore. anymore. I, think I think that, that as we grow, um, what, what we call fun changes too. I, I don't think an 80 year old is thinking the same things I'm thinking of fun. You know? so, I, I, I think, think that, that as we become closer and closer to God, God as we, we get closer to the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. as, as we grow, grow in our walk with Him, him our desires, the things, things that give us joy, joy would start to change. Mm -hmm. so, so instead, instead of focusing on pursuing fun, fun or what, what is fun, fun, trying to chase things to make, make yourself happy, how about you pursue God, mm -hmm. and then He will show you fun things to do as you grow older, and He will point it to you that, hey, you don't have to do that, you can do this instead. Yeah. You, you don't have to do that. You can do this instead. And you realize that there's no void. Mm -hmm. when, when you take out the bad or the immature, the mature, mature and the good comes in. Yeah. You know, there's no void. So you pursue God and He will show you everything else we added. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. So that's deep. Um, yeah, so for me, mine would be, you know, building on that, um, that, that scripture in Colossians. Um, 
That's that says, in whatever, whatever you do, do whatever, whatever. It's, it's all in compassion. Includes when you're having fun and when you're not having fun. So whatever you do in word or in deed, do it as unto the Lord. And that's just one life. So the Christian life is just one. So we should not compartmentalize our lives and say, oh, you know, I only want to involve Jesus in the seemingly religious stuff and I'm going to leave him out when I want to have fun or when I want to, you know, so. Because, because that, that way, way you realize, realize that, that Jesus wants to be involved you know, with everything, everything right? right? Um, so, so that way, I can, I can ask, ask myself, that that if, if I, I want to engage in the type of fun activity that I find questionable, questionable then the question I should ask the Holy Spirit, Spirit, like, are you the one leading me? Yeah. Right? Because only those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God, not those who go to church, not those who claim to be Christian. So who is doing the leading? That would be my question. Question, question for me, for us, us and for those who watch it. For that, that fun activity you're considering doing right now, after watching this episode, who is leading you? Is it your understanding of what is social culturally acceptable? Or is it the voice of the Holy Spirit? All right, I appreciate you guys. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for riding with us. It's been a, it's been a long walk. Did you say that we've arrived at Emmaus yet? <laughs> Can we ever arrive? <laughs> 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 well, all right, guys. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. Please, you know, uh, like our YouTube channel, subscribe to it, and we'd love to hear from you guys. You know, we're, we're trusting God that there will be times when, you know, as the Holy Spirit leads us, that we're going to take questions from you guys, and then we're going to talk about it, right? All right, we love you. So we'll come your way next time. God bless you. Take it. Have fun, but don't compromise. Yep, have fun, but don't compromise. All right, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.